Close your eyes, take a couple of good long, deep in and out breaths. And notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Place your attention there, and then ask yourself if it's comfortable. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If not, you can change. You can make it shorter, faster, slower, heavier, lighter, even deeper or more shallow. Experiment for a while to see what the body wants right now in terms of the breath. This breath is a nourishment, and it's free. They haven't privatized the breath yet, so you can breathe in and out as much as you want and learn how to breathe in a way that feels as comfortable as you can manage it in the body. This is one of the principles of the Buddhist teachings, that you find your happiness in harmless ways. We took the precepts right now, we've been practicing generosity. These three things, generosity, virtue, meditation, are ways of finding happiness that, one, harm nobody, and two, actually break down barriers between people. Most people look for their happiness in terms of material wealth and status, praise, sensual pleasures. But the more you gain of those things, somebody else has to lose something. You gain, they lose, or they gain and you lose. And when there's that gain and loss like this, there's going to be a, the erection of a barrier between you. Whereas when you give something, it's like you erase a barrier. You become relatives, actually, in the Dharma, relatives in the goodness of the act of generosity both the graciousness in the generous act itself and the graciousness in receiving other people's generosity. That creates a sense of being related. The more we have that in society, the more easily we'll be able to get along. The same with virtue. When you abstain from harming somebody else, then they're going to appreciate that. They realize that you hold them in respect and you care about their well-being. As for meditation, other people may not immediately gain the benefits, but the fact that you're finding a sense of well-being inside, simply by the way you breathe, by the way you keep your mind focused, means that when you come out, come out of the meditation, you're coming from a position of strength. You know you have a well-being inside that nobody else can know about, nobody else can touch. And you're safe in that way. And so it's more likely that you will have the strength to do what, what the right thing is toward other people. So ultimately, even though you're sitting here with your eyes closed, it looks like you're doing nothing, you're actually contributing something to the goodness of the world. As I said, this con contribution of goodness, this gift of goodness to one another, this is what erases barriers. There are all too many people out there who gain benefit from creating strife in, in society. And we can fight back, not by fighting them, but by creating a sense of well-being, a sense of connectedness through the goodness that we do to one another. That kind of society is a society worth preserving, one in which people are happy to live together. They benefit one another, and it makes it easier for each person to develop goodness inside. So this is why we look for goodness, look for happiness in generosity, virtue, meditation, because it's good all around. As John Munn, who was the founder of the forest tradition, said, any goodness that has no defects and has no drawbacks, that's what's genuinely good. And when you find something that's genuinely good like this, well, you keep pursuing it. Because you know that's how goodness is created in the world and in yourself. A goodness that nobody else can take away. <laughs>